MATLAB! Hello. In prior videos, we have seen the very basics of making a script in MATLAB and then publishing it. Here, we will discuss details on writing better scripts through the use of organization strategies, comments, and output suppression. All of this will make you a better coder. First, a short review. We can suppress the display of computations in the command window by using a semicolon. In the two halves of the screen, we see what was entered and the results that appear in the command window. Notice on the left that all the information is shown, even the obvious results like a equals 7. Of course a is equal to 7. That's what I just typed in. No need to have that repeated. On the right half, though, I place a semicolon at the end of the first two statements, so only the last one has its result displayed in the command window. Any command with the assignment operator included will by default echo the result to the command window. This is a waste of time and it clogs up your screen, especially when we deal with large matrices. So, almost always, you should suppress the output with this semicolon. Whether you suppress it or not, the results are stored in memory, shown in the workspace. In this example, A and D must have been stored properly in memory because the computation of G is correct. The rare exception of when you might actually want to leave an output unsuppressed is when there is a special result that you want to see displayed. To reemphasize, this only applies to those commands with an assignment operator included. Another review here, MATLAB scripts are simply a collection of commands saved in an M file. When we click the Run button, the commands will be processed in order from top to bottom. Scripts are the primary way that we will do work in this class because it allows you to save your work, make edits, and publish nicely. Now let's rework this volume of cylinder exercise, but in a script. Let's open a new script in MATLAB. Then type in the four commands you see here. Pause the video until you accomplish this. Now run your script. Hopefully you get the same result seen here. If not, make some edits and try again. The script works just fine, but we can improve it. The first improvement that we'll make is suppressing most of the commands, as you can see here. Now only the result I care about, volume, will display. Next, we'll improve the organization. It's a little clunky currently because we define a variable, then do a computation, then define a separate variable. More straightforward is to do what's shown below. Now we define all the necessary variables first and do the computations later. The key idea is to group similar commands together. The next improvement will be the addition of section header comments. We just created sections by grouping similar commands. Now let's simply name them for easy reference. A section header is a special type of comment that begins with two percent symbols and a space. And at last, we get to a lovely final script. Here I have added detailed comments to explain the work. In the subtitle region, I explain the overall purpose, provide the author's name and date. Also, next to each command, I put an inline comment to define the variables. Notable in this case is the defining of units. Now, if someone tried to use this script, but had the height measured in inches, they would know that they should first convert to centimeters. This nice final script actually accomplishes the exact same thing as the original script. The software doesn't care about the comments, but it is vital that you take advantage of them. Especially as we deal with more sophisticated problems, comments will help you write code more logically, and they will help you explain your code to others. Here's what this final code looks like when published to PDF. To review the steps to publish, please watch again the publishing video from day one. Notice the nice features. First, the section headers appear in bold and also in the table of contents. All of the other comments appear, as well as the actual code. And at the bottom, we see the output of the code. In this case, the volume that was displayed to the command window. This last slide demonstrates the five types of comments, title, subtitle, section header, inline comment, and standalone comment. Use these liberally. Remember that all comments follow a percent symbol. 
The title and section headers follow a double percent symbol and a space.